these words of assurance. Though we wander from the path, though we step out of the light, though we embroider the truth, though we deny the fullness of life, despite all this, Christ comes bearing light, light, truth, and new life to us all. We are made whole through Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. The God of resurrection is our cornerstone, the foundation of our strength and hope. And let us rise and be the people of God. Let us rise and be a living testimony of the way of Christ who passes peace and understanding. Let us rise and join the Spirit's song of living. May the God within me greet the God within you. May God within me the God within you. Now let us share the peace of Christ with whatever way is most comfortable to you, a handshake, a wave, a peace sign, or an elbow bump, let us take a moment to pass the peace of Christ. And that means you can get up and do a stretch break if you like.
hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us on this day, and we turn to the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. The story of Acts has steadily moved to the church becoming more inclusive. Pentecost was a prelude to the welcome of the Samaritan believers, of the Ethiopian official, and now of the God-fearing Gentile Cornelius and his household. Peter reports to the Jerusalem elders that this is the work of the Spirit, and criticism of Peter gives way to praise of God. And then following this um, reading, there will be a responsive reading that we'll roll right into. So the, the, let's take a moment then to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us on this day, and thanks to Mary for reading this morning.
everybody doing? Anything new and exciting at school? No. Not really. Not me at all. You have a field trip coming up. Yes. Where are you going? Target Field. Target Field doesn't sound like a field trip to me. It sounds like way more fun. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? I promise I won't. I won't call attention to to you. But everybody's good. Excellent. School's good. Yes. yes. Okay. Cool. So, Tom, let's talk about baptism for a second. Do we remember what happens in baptism? I do. What, what happens in baptism, Michael? You forgot, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> a newborn will will get a cross of water on their head. Yep. Yeah. Or they'll get dunked. Or they'll get dunked. Oh, it goes from head to dunk. Okay. That works. Okay. Now, now, why do we do baptism? Any ideas? Let's ask the congregation. Any, any, any thoughts on why we do baptism? To join the community. To join the guys. Children. What's that? For God's children. For God's children, yeah. To be born in Christ. To be born in Christ, yeah. What's that? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. And it's a time for families and children to know that you're not alone in the process, that there's a community here to support and nurture and guide. And so, yes, we have water that's blessed by the Spirit. And then we have Marianne Frisell stitched these years ago with a little shell on it. And then out in the narthex, I told you about the book, and then there's a candle out there that I invite you to light on the anniversary of your baptism, which we've done um, every year. We forgot to do yours in April this year. Yeah, your candle is Yeah, your candle is kind of a down there, isn't it? I have to get a new one. But during that time, it's to remind, to have the conversation, who was there on the day you were baptized. And then there's a red rose out on the, on the table as a symbol of Christian love to remind you that there's life and beauty in this time. And so there's the water. Did you see that there's water in here? There's actual water in there. And it's the perfect temperature. Oh, well, you're not sticking your finger in there. Because I know that's going to be playing in the water shortly with the tilly. But it's going to be lovely for that time. So let's take a moment to pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time that we can be present with you and everyone here for a baptism and to celebrate love and light, beauty and joy. And we do all this in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and I'll say amen. 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 Thanks guys for coming down. And good to see you ladies. As I was preparing for this sermon, I read a commentary written by Sarah Schirschle, a pastor um, from Peace Lutheran Church in Alexandria, Virginia. And they referenced the movie from 2021 entitled Belfast. I don't have any of you seen the movie Belfast. I've heard about it. It's on my list. I've not seen it. Did you see it? Honey? Just a trailer. Trailer. But yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, in this movie in Belfast, it's set in Northern Ireland in 1969. Buddy, a nine-year-old Protestant boy, has a crush on a Catholic classmate. And Buddy, that's right, Buddy asks his father if he could have a future with this classmate. And his father replies with the following, quote, that wee girl can be a practicing Hindu, or a Southern Baptist, or a vegetarian antichrist. But if she's kind and she's fair, and you two respect each other, she and her people are welcome in our house any day of the week." End quote. This quote, coupled then from what we heard from the Book of Acts this morning, straight me as deeply inclusive once we put aside all the baggage and nuance. It is also something that many of us in Christian communities strive for, welcome and inclusion. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. 
a tagline used by the United Church of Christ, a quote by Gracie Allen about 18 years ago. In her commentary, Shirley asked a fundamental question. In Christian community, what are the standards for belonging? This is the subject of Peter's vision in Acts, one of the most consequential moments in the early church. And frankly, it is an identity question that the church has been having ever since. And this question has become the question since COVID. We've had to think, how do we do church? What rituals are important to us? What do we need to do to be a part of Jesus' community? And how do we worship together? What meetings do we have or don't we have? These are the explicit church questions. Now what about the implicit ones? The questions where faith and politics intersect, whether we want them to or not. Can you vote for that person and still belong here? What are the attitudes toward guns, racism, and reproductive choice? How do our morals, values, and integrity intersect, and will that allow us to belong? And then who decides? The fundamental question meets the root of the issue, authority. By what authority does all of this get decided? Is it tradition? Is it scripture? Is it a particular pronouncement made by someone important? Is it God and God's self? Or is it the sayings of Jesus? The passage from Acts today is a powerful story, reminding us that sometimes we need to have our viewpoints changed. Traditional authority in this text was upended. Peter's vision challenged the status quo. This may seem rather simple to us, even obvious. Gentiles are included in the people of God. That's because we are Gentiles, and we know we are included. What this story does, however, is pushes us to ask the real question. Who is not here in our presence, and why is that? What conscious and subconscious boundaries have we set that have built barriers? Authority has its place. And as Peter emerged in his faith and as we emerge in ours, it is healthy to ask questions, why do we do what we do? We are looking for those guardrails, however, the hope is that they are not at the expense of someone else belonging. So we look at our Christian belief systems, and we look at the church ethos, and we examine our theology and faith, and we listen for God who continues to speak in us and through us, and we will continue to wrestle with these questions because, frankly, we will continue to encounter those who challenge us, who do not fit in our specified boxes, and yet we love them for whom they are and what they bring to the table. What did those listening to Peter's testimony do upon hearing his experience? They praised God. God is certainly an authority in this, coming to us as visions, coming to us as we are, even calling us by name, calling us beloved, and sometimes even pushing us to remain open to the presence of the holy that guides us to follow the commandment Jesus gave the community, formed in his name to love one another, just as Jesus loved us. So we too must love. And by doing so, people will know that we are Christian by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christian by our love. Amen. I invite you to pull out an insert in your bulletin that looks like so. It is called the Sacrament of Baptism. And for those who are parents and sponsors, if you want to come on up here with your insert as well, I invite you to come on down. Ooh, ooh.
called to the baptism, we are people of the water. We worship God whose love flows through water. Love like a rain shower awakens the sleeping seed within the soul and lures it to blossom. We worship a God whose love flows through water. Love like a wave pool inspires the delight of children, jumping, splashing, spraying each other, shivering with wet joy. We worship a God whose love flows through water. Love like a hot shower after a long day's work cleanses us, reawakens us. We worship a God whose love flows through water. Love like little drops, drips from fingertips to forehead. Through baptism, the family of faith makes room for one more. Come to the waters, Tilly Brook Schmidt, and receive God's gift of grace. Our God is the creator of life and the source of all love. Amen. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only for us, but also to our children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is their mark of acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's purpose, <coughs> and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Since in Christian love you present this child for holy baptism, I charge you to diligently and faithfully teach her the basics of faith, the prayers, the commandments, the creed, statements of faith, the Bible stories. And then as she grows in years, you place in her hands the Holy Scriptures. Bring her to the services of God's house and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith, thereby abiding in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the church. She may be brought up to lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. I therefore call upon you now to answer before God and the company of believers the following questions. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus the Christ? Will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? We will the help of God. Do you promise to help this child come to know that Jesus the Christ is a teacher? a prophet, a healer, and a foundation to the Christian faith? We know with the help of God. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? We do with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help this child be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that she may affirm her baptism? We do, with the help of God. And now, congregation, it's your turn. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support and care to the one about to be baptized as she lives and grows in Christ. We receive this child as a new person in Christ. We offer our understanding as she explores life. We hold this child in our love, seeking together to grow in wisdom, stature, and in favor of God and all people. We join these parents and sponsors Christ be with you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep you formed the firmament and brought for the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb, Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan 
became living water to the woman at the Samaritan well, and washed the feet of the disciples and sent them forth to baptize all nations by the Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water, by your Holy Spirit, present, be present with us, much like you were with Jesus and his disciples, that sin may have no power over us. Create new life in the one baptized this day, that she may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end. Schmidt has risen from the waters of baptism to the newness of life. She has become one with the witnesses of God from all times and places. Through baptism, God promises her the gift of the Holy Spirit to nurture her all the days of her life. Let us add our blessing and pledge our love as, she, as we welcome her into the living community of faith. We rejoice in God's power and love, freely given to each and all. We have you who will be baptized into the circle of love in Christ's church. We praise God for the gifts of ministry that we bring to this community. We promise to pray for you, to seek the depths of faith in you, to support you, and to love you. We covenant with you to love God with all our hearts, minds, souls, and strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. We, we will sing that hymn now. Let's put it on page six. <laughs>
this morning is for Strength in the Church. It's one of the four special mission offerings of the United Church of Christ. And there's an insert in your bulletin describing what this offering does. Uh, the Strength in the Church offering supports the efforts of our conferences and the national ministries of the United Church of Christ to support leaders, new churches, youth ministry, and innovation in existing congregations. 50% stays here within the conference and 50% goes to the national church. And in this write-up, it talks about a specific church experience within the Central Pacific Conference. And it's thanks to these dollars that the Central Pacific Conference has been able to offer workshops on end-of-life pastoral care, practicing gender justice, fostering generosity, and many other topics that help our clergy and lay people minister more effectively in their communities. Together, we're able to foster stronger connections among ministers and lay members who attend these workshops. And together, we nurture spiritual growth in our ministers and lay members who engage exciting topics with skilled facilitators who are justly compensated. Together, we are able to strengthen the church. So I thank you for your generous offerings and your donations. And there are many ways to give. We will pass a plate, as we have typically done and traditionally have done. And you can also look at your, uh, get the Vanco app and look up United Church of Christ. You can go online at hazelparkucc.org. There are a variety of ways to give. And I give thanks for all that you do and offer. Let us take a time and a moment then to receive these offerings.
because I'm going to be going to the installation of their new pastor this afternoon. Uh, I supply preached there a half a dozen times last year, and that the previous pastor left under extremely uh, difficult and painful circumstances, which led to the termination of that pastor's ministerial standing. So that, that church needs prayers and a lot of healing and, and hopes for their, their new ministry. Uh, the new pastor is very experienced and, and uh, 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 wise, and uh, I think they're off to a good start, but it's going to be a long time before they completely heal. Yeah. Prayers to St. John's. Thanks, Bill. Daniel? Rochester, Minnesota, as they endured arson in their building. So prayers for that congregation and that community. Also prayers for the continued war in Ukraine, the unrest that is taking place in Palestine and Israel, and the act of hate that took place in Buffalo, New York, at the hands of white supremacy. Are there other prayers to lift up? I'm say, yeah, David. Uh, prayers for my son and son-in-law And COVID, 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 COVID. And prayers to your mama who has a birthday this week, right? Yes, prayers to my mom. Number 96? Yes, ma'am. Number 96? Find a way to be together. 
Let there be miracles again, healings and sharings of all that we are or might become, a weaving of the world's many strands, differences of race, color, creed, telling creation's story in all its splendor, that all folk, whoever they are, witness to the wisdom and wit of God. Let there be peace again, siblings bonded across the seas, weapons left to rust, words of hate left in the past, the will of God for all humanity lived, not whispered, spread abroad to all folk for the greeting of earth. Let there be a new heaven and a new earth. The former things passed away, no more mourning or crying or pain. For God makes all things new as we gather together as your people on this day to share in the prayer you taught us to pray, beginning, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Page 494, they'll know we are Christians and we'll sing it now. Page 494. And if you're able, I invite you to please rise. <laughs> God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
And may God continue to look upon you with wonder and light as we do this work together. Go in the peace of Christ, my friends, and let the people say, Amen. Amen.